Welcome to this overview of PXF and Flight. So I have a scene here with a few objects. I've got a couple cards, a couple spheres, some geometry that I imported with a Read Geo, and I want to light this geometry using an HDR light map. So here I have a beautiful light map, like so, and I want to use this to light my scene. Uh, maybe you're aware there's an environment light built into Nuke. So if we go in the uh, geometry menu here under lights, you've got environment and it seems promising. It's called environment light. We've got a map input for the light map and we can connect that to our scene. I've made sure to add shaders to all my geometry here. So my texture has a diffuse and a specular shader. I've got a chrome ball with a reflection shader, a gray ball with a specular and diffuse and so on. So all my shaders are set up properly. I've got my light. I'm sending all my scene into a scanline render, put my viewer on it, and it looks pretty unexpected. This is not what I was hoping to get. So let's crank the value here on the intensity. Maybe it's just too dark. And this is what I get. So I'm pretty disappointed. This is not what I was expecting. So the environment light in Nuke only contributes to the specular component. It doesn't do anything for the diffuse shaders or the reflection shaders, and it doesn't cast shadows either. So this is not working for me uh, at all. I'm, I can't use this. So I'm going to get rid of this environment light and replace it with a pixel fudger and light. If I go into PXF menu here, PXF lights, PXF env light, and here I'm going to feed my light map to the map input. It's good practice usually, especially if you have a busy map, to blur it a little bit. So let's blur that a bit or more than a bit. Here we go. And we're going to use the light map like so and connect that to our scene and put our viewer at the end here. And now we've got a tiny, tiny uh, light rig here that's uh, a, a little sphere. Uh, we got to make this way bigger so our entire scene fits inside of that sphere. To move, rotate or scale the light rig, we have to use an axis. So I'm going to create an axis. Connect it to the axis input. And I'm going to scale my whole uh, light rig by a lot to make sure that it's big enough to surround my entire scene. So this is promising. We already have uh, lighting coming from our HDR light map, but we are missing some things. We don't have any reflections and we don't have any shadows. These are uh, limitations of the scanline render node. So instead of using a scanline render, we're going to use a ray render node. So this is a built-in node uh, to Nuke, and this is Nuke's built-in ray tracing node. So instead of rendering through scanline render, we're going to render through ray render. And if we look at that instead, now we have shadows. Notice the card here is casting a shadow on the sphere and we have reflections. So the statue is being reflected in the chrome ball. So we're making progress here. However, in the chrome ball, I'm hoping to reflect uh, the clouds and the trees of the environment. And I right now I'm only seeing white. So that's a problem. That's because I didn't connect my reflection input. So not only are we going to build a light rig, we're also going to put a big sphere around everything that will have this texture mapped to it. And that's going to enable reflections. So let's connect our reflection input as well. And now you can see the clouds and the trees and the environment being reflected in the chrome ball we also see our reflection object in the background uh, we'll see how to get rid of that uh, later when we uh, don't want to see it but right now it's actually useful because it enables us to compare the lighting of the environment to our 3d objects so this is working uh, pretty well we can swap to a different uh, light map if we want let's try that so i've got a different map here so if we change the light map, nothing happens. 
because environment light doesn't know we changed it. It only knows when we connect its own input to something else, then it will it will resample the lights. But if we have a node in between, like the blur node, it will not know when we're uh, changing the input of the blur node. So when that happens, we can manually resample our lights. So if I go in the end light, I can click on sample lights. So it's gonna resample the lights and give us the right lighting. Same here, if I switch to this map, nothing changes, I gotta hit sample lights. So now my objects are lit by the dawn uh, light, light map, but they're still this guy in the reflection map. So that's why we see the cloudy sky in the chrome ball. So of course we need to switch that as well. And now we should have proper reflections. So now these guys are lit by the dark uh, light map. So let's go back to the cloudy day sample lights again here we go so now we have a pretty good result i'm pretty happy with this however you can see the shadows are a bit uh, lacking you can see the actual multiple shadows so where does that come from well really we are not really building an environment light we're just be building a rig full of point lights so what really we're doing is we're creating a bunch of point lights and each point light inherits the color and intensity of the pixel that's underneath it. So if you have a light that's in the clouds, it's going to be bright and gray. If you have a light that's in the grass area, it's going to be darker and green. If you have a light that's in the blue sky, it's going to be blue. So all of these lights will emit various uh, intensities and various colors uh, built by the environment map. So by default, we have an 8x8 rig here giving us about 59 lights. This is good enough in general, but if you want really good quality shadows, you will need more lights. So to create more lights, we can change the number of rows and columns. Let's say 15 by 15. And now we have 200 lights in our light rig. And you can see the shadows are softer. If we have too few lights, let's say I'm really cheap and I don't want to spend time rendering a lot of lights, then if I have a, a three by three rig, nine lights, you can actually see the individual shadows of every light. I don't have enough lights in my light rig now to properly light my scene. So 15 by 15 seem to be that's that's giving us best shadows, but it's going to be slow to render. If we go to 8x8, then it's a compromise. The shadows aren't perfect, but uh, our render speed is faster. If you don't need shadows at all, you can disable the shadows with the switch here. Here we go, so you can compare with and without. You can enable and disable the lights in the rig. So this will turn off the lights and turn them on. You can also turn their icons off. So it's if it's too busy in the 3D view, you can enable and disable display. Let's try a different uh, light map. So I have another one here that's a little bit more bright. So I'm gonna use the blurry version for the light map and the non-blurry version for the reflection map. Here we go. So this particular map is a bit too bright. It's overexposed. I could of course put a gray node here and change the values, or you can change it within the light itself. So if we go in the color tab, that's gonna change the value of the lights in the rig. So if I uh, bring down the intensity, then you can see that our lighting changes but the reflection object doesn't. So these are adjusted separately. So if I lower the intensity even more, you can see that the light goes darker, but the reflection on the reflection object isn't uh, affected. If I need to bring that down, I would go under emissive object and then I can bring down the intensity there. That's how you would change the intensity of your lighting. You can also change the color of the light and the reflection object if you need to. In general, you don't need to play with this too much if your light map is at a good exposure and a good white balance. All right, now let's try something a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna bring in the light map with a bright sun. So here, like so. 
and notice here on the building in the background i've got a bright sunlight same thing on the umbrellas here and i don't see any of that bright sunlight on my 3d objects this is because the sun is a tiny area in the entire map and if we look at our rig here the sun falls between our lights so we've got a light here a light here a light here a light here none fall exactly on the sun and we could try to add more uh, lights but it would be hit and miss sometimes lights would be on the sun sometimes lights wouldn't be on the sun so i need to be able to add one extra light just for the sun so to do that we have a special tab here called sun we're going to put the viewer on our map here and when the sun tab is in the foreground we've got a little a controller here called sun position and we can move it to the sun area and click sample so that's going to read the actual color and intensity of the light under that uh, controller here and we can enable the sun so let's look at our render without the sun first and when we enable the sun so now we have one extra light in our uh, light rig an extra light exactly at the right position for the sun exactly at the right color and intensity and now if we rotate our light map with our axis we can rotate let's say 180 degrees and the sun will come from the other side so now they're lit from the left side if we set it to 90 degrees then they're going to be lit from behind and minus 90 degrees they're going to be lit from the front here we go you can see that the sun is matching on our objects and the background buildings here so let's go back to the previous rotation here so that looks pretty good so i have sharp shadows for the sun and soft shadows for the sky and everything else i can control the intensity of the sun and the color of the sun using the values in the sun tab i can control the intensity and the color of everything else in the color tab now that we have a bright sun we can talk about shadows a little bit more so let's bring an extra object in our scene i've created a little card even though there's transparency on that card because of the texture texture has the alpha set to zero in some pixels the entire object is casting a shadow on our statue this is because our environment light is set to shadow mode solid this will use the entire geometry and ignore the texture if we switch it to full alpha then you notice that the letters are actually casting a shadow on the characters so if you want full shadows use full alpha but this will be slower to render you can use clipped alpha but this only affects uh, scanline render and not ray render so if you're using ray render you have to choose between solid and full alpha let's go back to solid here and disable our card all right this is great i'm pretty happy with the lighting however i need to find a way to render this without the background included i want an rgba pre-multiplied uh, version of this without the background one easy way to do this would be to go in my light under emissive object the emissive object is the big sphere with the texture on it and just disable it so i can uh, disable the emissive object it will disappear my alpha is good my rgb is good but there's a problem i don't see the environment being reflected in my chrome ball here which is unfortunate so if you're not using the reflection shader anywhere you're done you don't need to do anything else i wish we could see the sky here reflected in the ball so i'm gonna re-enable my emissive object and now we're back to square one i'm still seeing it one solution would be to push the emissive object into another aov so fortunately for us in ray render there's a tab called aovs and we can push different uh, parts of the shaders to different layers so the reflection object is using the emissive shader so we can push the everything from the emissive shader to some random aov so i've created a new layer called trash and i'm going to push the emissive uh, shaders to the trash layer and i'm going to enable output aovs and because remove aov from beauty pass is enabled everything that gets pushed to some random a layer will not be rendered in the rgba 
layer. So now our reflection sphere is gone and I'm pretty happy. The background is black as it should and I have a reflection in my chrome ball. However, there's one last step required. If I look at my alpha channel, it's still not good because the alpha of the sphere is still vi visible in the beauty pass or the RGBA uh, layer. So if we go back to our environment light, we can enable transparent and this will set the alpha to zero on our sphere. It's still visible and reflective, but now it won't corrupt our alpha channel. So now I'm pretty happy with this. I've got reflections in the chrome ball. I don't see my reflection object in the background and I don't see the alpha of my reflection object in the background either. This looks a little bit aliasy, so we could uh, add some samples in here uh, to make this a bit smoother and I would be pretty happy with this. So I'm ready to render. So that was our overview of PXF Envlight. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.